Hello, welcome back to Los Comics TV. I am your host, Javier Hernandez. And today we're looking at some dinosaur comics from Gonagai. Uh, his name should definitely be familiar to regular uh, viewers of this sh uh, channel. And I guess if you follow me in general uh, through my social media accounts or, you know, in the old days when we used to sit down and have lunch together, which I think those days are coming back. Uh, anyway, though, so yeah, uh, I got two volumes of manga I'm going to be talking about today. Um, really excited about these. I mean, these are just kind of really, well, a lot of stuff is off the wall, but this one <laughs> has dinosaurs, robots, cybernetics, and other giant robots. Um, this one I got in today, just literally I got today, um, yeah, straight from Japan. Um, so talk about this one second, okay? We'll go to this one first. So this one I got, I think I got in about a week ago. So pretty current stuff and I was just waiting to get the other one so we can do a double, uh, a double whammy. So, um, what is this? This is a comic, a uh, manga called Garla. Um, I was thinking of Darla from The Little Rascals, if you guys know who that show is. Uh, Garla, from what I can tell, I believe that's the name of this demonic dinosaur. Um, so yeah, right off the top, you know, very Godzilla looking uh, dinosaur with these really, really, really cool, um, I guess they're horns, right? But they're, they're not tusk, they're horns coming, you know, some from the back of his mouth, just pointing, it's just such a bizarre wonderful uh character um it's a great way to just make sure it's not godzilla either so don't sell horns on it um and there's our hero so we'll get into this comic um so this was originally serialized uh 1976 through 77 and then it was col collected in a uh, one of these uh tonko bonds these little paperbacks uh this one's from 82 and then i believe there was another one another uh publisher issued it in uh, 2000 so as far as i know there's only two um print two versions of this so again it's not something i'd heard you know i've been pretty much uh collecting reading following uh going to guys comics his career you know probably about a good 20 22 years by now 23 years um I may have seen this picture once or twice in one of the many art books I have, but never really, the name never, Garla, the name, the title never really came across me, never really rang a bell or anything. Um, and then I started, you know, I saw this again somewhere. Something happened where I saw something about the actual manga online and I saw more images and I was like, oh man, I got to get this. So here we are. Um, yeah, the back is the same uh, image just blown up with a little, some little pattern over it. So it tells me there's not a lot of artwork on this uh, character, a color artwork, because normally you'd have another color image on the back, a different image, right? So, like I said, it's one of his more, uh, I guess, lesser known works. I mean, from a guy who's got, you know, hundreds and, or literally tens of thousands of pages of, of work. So anyway, let's just jump right to it. So here's another shot. Um, uh, the hero here is Hattori, no, Hattori. Hayato Otori, another one of those uh, young going to guy heroes, and there's a great shot of the uh, the monster. Man, I just I don't know the idea of you know going to guy doing the whole Godzilla storyline for a couple of thousand pages would have been awesome, but what we got here is uh, Garla, and it opens up here with the uh, the use at the beach. And um doesn't take long for an, some underwater vessel to come across a volcano erupting. Just literally blows its uh, lid. And out of the uh, erupting volcano, ta -da, a monster of some sort, right? So then we cut back to another shot there of the, uh, the gang here. At, I'm not sure what this is, a school or something, but... Hayato was at the head of the table there and um, was getting a very bad headache. Really bad, right? Once the eyes go white, you know something's wrong. Boom. Bleeding. What happened here? 
yeah, he's got the uh, some bird symbol. So on the cover, um, yeah, you can see the bird's body here in pink. And I guess his eyebrows, at least from what I could tell, the eyebrows form the wings. But um, I guess that's the same effect here, right? Because the, the, the body's kind of shaded. I'm not sure if you can tell that. But anyway, it's a neat design, right? You put the, the body between someone's eyebrows. Their eyebrows create the wing effect. Um, meanwhile, just like in the old Godzilla films, the monster strikes in the sea. And... Look at that, rises out of the water with the eye glowing. I mean, that's a great shot. God, I love that. I love that. And, um, I got those senses something, or they hear it. Maybe they heard it out in the ocean. They're all running out to the, uh, all running out to see what's going on. And he jumps in the water. Then there's this, uh, there's always a mysterious... Mysterious being watching this stuff. Again, you know, not reading Japanese. I just got to just visually, visually make it out. Uh, and then the friend there, she jumps in the ocean. I mean, that is a brave soul. And she does find him. And she herself is... Did she fall in the water? I went really quick. Yeah, she fell in the water. And it looks like both her and Hayato are being saved by this mysterious entity. And uh, this serpentine uh, snake around all of them. There they are on top of the wave. So, now this guy shows up. And I guess he's explaining things. And again, it's like our old monster is attacking or swimming around there. So yeah, here's what it looks like we get a lot of exposition. But then boom, here's what you guys came for, right? Look at that beautiful monster. Oh man, effective, effective. And getting some great shots here. Man, I, I love the thick, expressive brush strokes on there. And there's a nice shot of the ghastly uh, creature. Wow, look at this, black on black. Man, oh man, yeah, like I said, the really loose, almost rushed uh, brush strokes there, creating the uh, scaly hide. And uh, we get the first glimpse of uh, a robotic character. From what I read, uh, I got to have some psychic abilities, I, th I guess because of that bird emblem that appeared on his forehead. You know, one of those things, maybe he was chosen to help. Uh, here's some great scene, the monster tearing through town. All right, this is what we all you, you want to see in these uh, stories. The poor people running out of the city. Look at this. It's right out of Godzilla, like the original 50s one. The fact that it's even black and white. Um, wow. Yeah, Air Force strikes. Man, yeah, this is literally Godzilla all over again. And now we're at some uh, the hero's base, and uh, Atto's got himself a cool pilot suit. What's he gonna pilot, right? Ta da! There we go. There's our robot. Now this, uh, from what I read, also this manga was supposed to be uh, came out seventy six. Supposed to be a sequel originally. That was the idea to um, one of the guy's other previous books, UFO Robot Grandizer. So the robot does have a similar appearance to him, particularly the horns. In fact, I reviewed, uh, I did a review of um, Grandizer in a previous video. I'll put the link up here too. Um, so now, yeah, look at this. Oh man, when I, when I first opened this, I was aghast. So this robot, Big, um, big Daitan, he's a four-armed robot. And he's sitting inside this uh, robotic dragon. And it's like, wow. Yeah, my jaw dropped when, literally when I saw that the first time. And um, our pilot is right in, in right here in his forehead in this glass uh, little 
torn here on on the forehead of the robot. So they they take off. So yeah, the dragon, the the jets engage and uh, it goes flying off. I mean, look at this. This is amazing. There's the pilot in the cockpit, which uh, Go and a guy pretty much began that idea with um, Mazinger Z Koji Kabuto, putting the actual human who controls the robot inside the robot as opposed to just controlling it with a little control box or something like um, we saw in uh, Gigantor Tetrigen 28 in the uh, was it late 50s, early 60s <clears throat> from Mitsutero Yokoyama. But anyway, it's another time for that. We'll cover that artist another another time. Anyway, flying into battle. Uh, so we want to see the fights. This is a wonderful shot. Wow, Cinescope here, man. So this is a gigantic robot on top of this massive. Imagine seeing that flying down the, down into the city as this thing is tearing it up. Again, you know, you see all this fine line work and then you see the brush strokes on the, the monster. They're just huge and thick. And then you get some little detail here in the head, but um, that, that's so effective. It's so effective. Ah, uh, here we go. Crash right into him. And the dragon heads, you know, wrapping around him. Man, money shot. How many money shots have we had already? Um, yeah, the battle has been engaged. Stabbing the monster with the giant spears. Oh, man. This is what you came for, folks. Of course, the monster's not just sitting there taking it. It's fighting back. Man, all I can hear is the uh, Akira Fikube score. Uh, the guy who composed the, all the most the, the early Godzilla films, and he flipped the monster over on its back. Rockets engaging. That's a that's a beautiful shot. This uh, big Daiton in pure silhouette. But don't cut out the bad guy. We're only halfway through the book. Man. Okay. The monster gets the... The dragon... Look at that. Clamps on his neck. And flings him around. And Ike's ripped off his head. You don't see that too much. You don't see the hero take such a huge pounding right, on the top, right at the beginning. Wow. So now our uh, our hero here is gigantic dragon vehicle. It's missing its head. But check this out. He flies out of the... I, at first I thought maybe it was just attached to it. And then like, oh shoot, yeah. Makes sense. He's actually sitting in it. He flies out. You see more of his uh, whole body there. Those, those four arms are great. And now, of course, he's got a gargantuan sword. And um, time to kick the battle up in second gear. Second round, right? Wow. And of course, he's got Godzilla type fire breath. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, I just want you to marvel at the art. That's what I do. It's a nice silhouette of the monster. This is so good. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, totally torching the monster. Of course, uh, luckily, the young pilot jumps out of the, the robot. He doesn't want to get fried. But uh, it's like the monster's eyeing him. Right? It's like in those movies. Like, I always wonder, how can they see the human? This whole it's, like looking, it's like you looking at an ant. But, of course, that's what that's the drama we want. It's about to stomp on him. Yikes. And something's going on here above him, and it's like he gets pulled away. How's that? How do you like that one? 50 tons of monster flying out, flying out of the city. Uh, here's our base. We'll go a little quicker, only because I do want to show the other book. And um, maybe not try to make a 
sorry, I was just checking something here on the side. Checking my timer, actually. Uh, here we go, the monsters, uh, it's like they're throwing them back in the volcano. Then the porpoise show up. <laughs> like, what is that about? It's taking them a while to get there, right? <laughs> Into the volcano. Still going. Bam, there he goes. Wow. Damn, right down into the lava. Like it's Godzilla, except for those horns on his on his mouth. Then uh, we got some, uh, it's like an ancient city popping up to the water. And now we get to meet our alien invaders. They're really interesting. It's like they're morphed with the dinosaurs. So it's like we're getting some exposition here. And a tidal wave. <laughs> Yikes. A little pair of eyes there in that building. Interesting. Yeah, from what I, I read, I think there's um, these aliens were around back in the you know, the prehistoric days, the dinosaur days, and then now they're, you know, coming back to the surface. At least that's what I read on one site. Um, there we go. Destruction here. Uh, across the world, there's New York, Japan. And you know what? Our robot got incinerated already. So we're without a robot. Although we've got these uh, these folks here giving some uh, consultation. Definitely getting a lot of uh, backstory here. There we go. Real dinosaurs. And, you know, we're going, we're getting to the end here, as you can tell. And that this is the only volume, for whatever reason, the storyline, whatever, um, you know, for whatever reason, the publisher went under or something, but it does end basically inconclusively, right? I mean, look. Here the, here's our heroes. Dramatic here. The guy's talking to him, points at him. That's it. It's over. And this is the only volume. Like I said, it was just something that did not get finished. But you know what? This was a blast. This was a huge blast. So I'm glad. Uh, I'm definitely glad I got, I got it. Now here's the other one. This is I've been talking about this online. Um, another crazy story. Um, this one was originally serialized in 1978 to 1980. Um, it's called a machine soar, 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 right? Like the saurus, soar, machine soar. Um, it's from Gona Guy, definitely his studio. I guess from what I, again, what I read, he was the initial uh, idea, conceptualizer. Again, I don't know how much work is done, character designs or what, but credited as the artists are um, two of two guys who were his assistants and then on their own, then ended up having their own separate career doing their own manga for either his company or even other companies um ken ishikawa and gosaku ota ken ishikawa um i talked about his work in another video uh he co-created um oh my gosh i can't believe this the name just disappeared from my oh my god uh my grandizer that's a ufo grandizer get a robo i'm so sorry get a robo um, which I did cover one of those, the earliest first volume of that in a different video. Um, but Ishikawa was a co-creator of that. Eventually he, he would just come back to get a robo over the couple of year decades and just pretty much work on it on his own. So, um, 
But this is a machine sour. It's a cyborg dinosaur. So again, I think the majority, I think the artwork is pretty much handled by both uh, Ken Ishikawa and Gosaku Ota. Um, again, I, we never know the division of labor. If Gona guy had any involvement with the art, maybe just the storyline. So definitely got to credit Ken Ishikawa. At least, and what I understand, Ken Ishikawa did the first half, and then uh, Gosaku Ota handled the second half. But they all have that almost kind of like a house style. Uh, from the Gona Guy Dynamic Productions. But anyway, this is what I'm going to get, get right into it. Um, again, we start back in our dinosaur days. You know, here's a nice two-page spread. Dinosaur, cyborg dinosaur, boom. Um, so yeah, this is back in the prehistoric days. Dinosaur, a UFO, is uh, coming and shooting them up with stuff. And takes them away. This is a trip. So what happens is, now we go to the present. Um, again, the heroes always have these really cool scientific bait fortresses. Um, guess what? That UFO was a time-traveling thing, and boom, they bring the dinosaur back to the present. <laughs> there he is. So I thought that was an interesting spin on it. Um, so now it looks like the dinosaur, I don't know if it's against his wishes, but... He's getting uh, some enhancements there. And uh, here's our hero. Uh, for, I only saw his name listed once on one side I, I looked at. So the doctor doing all the... Uh, the main doctor, Dr. Toto Roki. Would be that guy, I imagine. And then this would be his son. Um, Seigi. If I'm pronouncing that right. S-E-I-G-I. Seigi? Seigi? hope I'm doing that right. But it looks like to be another high school kid. All these high school kids getting these like tremendous, either becoming demons, devils, or getting these tremendous robotic, uh, you know, super, super, um, super robots. Anyway, uh, there's a three-headed monster. Reminds me of uh, King Ghidra from Godzilla. Just destroyed that plane in flight. Crazy. Um... Monster Claw ripping through. And there we go. This is our first shot, I guess, of our cybernetic dinosaur. So he's gone. He's undergone a complete transformation. Meanwhile, these uh, these monsters are attacking. That's great, right? Three-headed giant flying dragon. And um, again, this looks like the pilot sits in inside the, uh, the dinosaur's head. Where they carved, carved out a spot for a cockpit. <laughs> And then, boom, activate it. And uh, this is the villain, um, General Golgoth, if our website we consulted is correct. It's like a Kona Guy fan site, I think. Um, and the battle is like about to be in game. Boom, here we go. Look at that. Our uh, machine sour gets uh, hit by this three-headed uh, dragon thingy. And we're off to the races. That's a great two-page shot. The hero, the two giant uh, monsters fighting, and this must be the bad guy and his uh, subordinates. Very Darth Vader. And, yeah, of course, obviously, the ancient uh, samurai. Yeah, right here we go. We're getting into, like, the bloody action. It's violent, it's brutal, and we love it. It's just, it's just lines on paper, folks. Oh, this is great. It's like he's stabbing him with his head, that, that horn on his head. Yeah, Ishikawa has a, such a sweeping sense of dynamic action. Um, that's what you want in something like this. That was funny. There's like a skull design, I think, on the uh, this dragon's body. That's a beautiful effect. It's like a gradient. Oh, by the way, what's going to happen here? Uh, Machine Sour stabs his hand in the chest. Digs in deep and pulls out the dragon's heart. <laughs> or maybe one of the hearts because the dragon takes off. This is great stuff, isn't it? And um, our hero fires some rockets from the, from the machine sower. Uh, I think the shoulder rockets, if I remember. 
I looked at this earlier. It's hard to tell a little bit here. Um, I like the point of view, though. He's in the cockpit, and you see the missiles going after the flying dragon and blows it up. Yeah, blows it. Wow, blew it up, all right. The smithereens, as they say. And it's like our first uh, mission is a success, right? They defended the base and killed the villain. So back at the villain, I love this little uh, henchman. His brain is literally just forming out of the back of his head. So he must be like the chief scientist or something. Um, but yeah, the villains get their first sight of the machine sour. And of course, there's a collection of a lot of the monsters. So it looks like it's going to be all out attack. Take down those heroes, take down machine sour. And uh, yeah, it's a. It's a the uh, pilot just kind of checking out his uh, his vehicle and, you know, they always get attached to these things so that, you know, his friend. But, um, yeah, it's just that, you know, that going to guy genre of the giant robot. So this is cool. Right? It's just uh, not a bat. It's like a, what is it called? Pterodactyl? Yeah, here it is. The wings open up. There's our Rodan standing. And it looks like it's got a cybernetic head. And uh, and then the, uh, the bad guy demon monsters look like they're flying down to Earth. And it's time to get ready. But not without, not without some hijinks, right? I'm not sure who the elderly lady is, but I love the cartooning on these. So I love about, you know... You get that a lot with the going to guy stuff. Very cartoony, where it's silly and fun, cutesy, whatever you want to call it. Like uh, humorous. And then it's just mixed up with the brutal, monstrous action, bloody action. Um, it's a nice shot of the cockpit here. It's got a little stuffed dog. <laughs> I didn't notice that the first time. And here we go. Great shot. Wow. Comes thundering out of the uh, headquarters, and here comes one of those flying monsters. Yeah, now we're into our yeah major attack the city with our oh my gosh, attacking the city, and uh, someone just got eaten here. Well, what I say about the violence side by side with the cute humorous stuff? Here we go. Wow, here we go. Machine sower in action. That's, that's that's wonderfully rendered. And this is great. Here comes that flying uh, pterodactyl. And it attaches itself to the back of Machine Sour. Now he can fly. <laughs> now he's got a pair, giant pair of bat wings. And the monster is attacking the city. The, right at the tanks. Let me... How many times have we seen this scene in Japanese uh, monster films? And Machine Sour coming in now with the uh, pterodactyl wings. Wow. Blew this thing apart. Easily, I might add. That's chapter, chapter 2. So, yeah, I mean, this is amazing, amazing. This is a very hard-to-find book, too, and when you find it, it's not it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's and it's rare, so. This was uh, published in 86, and I don't think there's a second printing. There might be, but not that I'm aware of, as far as from what I read. Um, it's a cool-looking monster. It's kind of a crab. And uh, see, he has uh, his own jetpack to fly up into the cockpit. Makes sense when the ro you know, your robot is, I don't know how many stories tall. You got to get up and be able to pilot it. This guy, I think, was, I think that's, that was his friend we saw earlier. But look at the friend, look at, he's growing a, a creature out of his belly. 
Is that crazy or what? Look at that. That thing is actually reaching out at the at the pilot. Slams him on the ground. That's such a great visual, right? Here's this guy, and then this demon thing is coming out of his stomach, and it's just acting on its own. It's going to crush the kid with a rock. Actually, he does. He hits him right in the head. And uh, this thing is defying the gigantic machine sour. But our hero is not done with. I think he's tapping the helmet. And so this little demon thing he just runs out of the guy's body. And um, jumps into the head of that giant crab monster. Like he's the pilot. That's kind of neat. So yeah, uh, yeah, this was his friend. So now that he's maybe free of the possession, uh, Seigi flies him into the cockpit. So now they're both in the cockpit. That's kind of interesting. You don't usually see a guest in the cockpit, but it makes sense. There's the safest place to be. And now we're back in the battle. Uh, it's like he's ripping this giant crab monster in half. And then the, so the shoulder rockets, boom. I mean, there, it's done for. I love that shot where he's just walking. You just hear the lumbering footsteps of this giant uh, cyborg dinosaur. There's a nice two-page spread. With the uh, some monster hanging out of uh, Machine Seller's mouth. So yeah, this is just phenomenal work. I mean, Cyborg Dinosaur might be the first one in... Right, this is what, 78? 1978? Uh, here's the bad guy spaceship. This gargantuan ship with this cool dragon head sticking out of it. Because why wouldn't, why wouldn't you have one, right? And it's like they're about to attack the base. And now he's giant. The General Golgoth. Golgoth. I love this big giant hair demon. It's like this big giant hairball. With the evil face. Right? What more do you want? What, what would you expect in a manga of uh, a cyborg dinosaur? Oops, sorry. Yeah, another big fight here in the city. Another uh, another shelled creature. Praying Mantis type. Man, this stuff is... Uh, you know, I just recently just saw, like everybody else, I saw uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla, so I'm totally getting that vibe here. These giant behemoths fighting it out in the city. And the hair, all, the hair all over the place. Huge firestorm. Wow, look at that shot of Machine Sour. There was, um, so there was never an animation on this character. Um, or a movie or anything. But there was some licensing. There are some figures, very rare, hard to find, hard to acquire. There was like a record. There was like a theme song, which is unusual for me that there'd be a theme song... But there has never been an, an anime to go with it. Um, so, go, you know, go figure, man. Machine Sower had its uh, fans and it had its uh, people willing to license things from it. But there are a couple of figures of him. Um, I'd love to get one, but they're very costly when they do show up. But I mean, right? I mean, a cyborg dinosaur. Here he is spinning some giant, um, some weapon that he has. Yes, he does have weapons. Besides the ones that are built in them. Um, wow. Just blew the hell out of the bad guys here. Here, look at that. Here he flings his spinning uh, spiked uh, disc and cuts this monster in half, looks like. Wow. I got the gigantic evil uh, villain's uh, spaceship. Engaging that. Look how big it is. Machine Sour is holding it up. Or holding on to it. Wow. And take flight after it. 
Wow, look at that. He's, yeah, the villain's taking off in outer space. Here comes Machine Sour flying right after it. Wow. Man, that is very, look at that shot in space. And this is like right from a film, right? Where the, where the monster just starts floating. Wow. Man, this is cosmic. This is epic. Oh, yes, and then this character. Um, I, I saw him first online as an action figure. His name is, greatest name ever, Death Cross. Go figure. So there was an action figure of that character, too. Um, There's a great two-page spread. Man. This might be the, so this might be the, yeah, it's about halfway through. This might be where the other artist comes in, Gosaku Ota, because I'll, you know, seems a little different, the character designs. And the hero seems actually smaller now. So th that might be a pretty clear indication where, it's, you know, the artist split, but, um, you know, still following the character designs. Definitely on the dinosaur. Yeah, it definitely looks a little different. But, um, yeah, we're, we're all together enjoying Machine Sour. I, yeah, like I said, you know, this is uh, hard to find ma manga. If you never find it or it takes you a while and you really want it, at least you got this video. You know, I'm glad to be uh, showing this, showing them, showing off the book. Stomp on the guy. Like the death cross menacingly behind the uh, main general. Here's some hijinks with the uh, young folks. Uh, here's death cross. Look him up online. Um, it's a it's a neat color scheme and the figure looks fantastic. It's really simple, real simplified and man, it's, but this is where it came from. Like the general is going one on one with the uh, monster uh, machine sour. You know, sometimes in uh, stories, comics, whatever, you know, sometimes people don't like when the main bad guy, like the guy doing all the commanding, engages the mon the heroes or whatever. But I don't know. I I like that. It's like okay, they haven't done anything. His troops haven't done it, so he's just gonna handle it himself. I mean, the fact that he's just as big is pretty pretty frightening. And, uh, wow, the general looks like he got ripped in half. So he's a giant robot. Yeah, Machine Sword throws his giant flying spike disc. Cuts him in half easily. So Death Cross is, uh, may have to finish the job. <laughs> I mean, you're getting, uh, right, we're all getting our, um, Rugging what we came for, just giant battles with these giant behemoths. And Death Cross has a giant cape. And a giant sword. Ouch. Got our hero there. And uh, Death Cross, his body comes apart. I remember seeing this here. So there's his There's his arm or a leg. An arm. There's his head. And here they are over a stadium, baseball stadium. Man, seeing that thing coming down at you. Pulls out his uh, bazooka. <laughs> that <laughs> this this giant flying cyborg dinosaur has a giant bazooka. Of course. Man, the people here in the stadium are getting quite a show. Here he is looming over the uh, the stadium wall. That's great. So some people here stealing a a dinosaur. 
out of some exhibit. Hey, if there could be a... Yeah, is that funny? There's a dinosaur at the zoo and they stole it. Why, is, why does that bother me? And the previous 200 pages didn't. Isn't that funny? How things work. Uh, we're back to a giant, uh, another giant dinosaur attacking. But don't worry, Machine Sour is here. And he's probably going to kick his butt. Wow, uh, what is that, a Triceratops? A cyborg Triceratops with tank tread. His uh, rear legs, that's great. The rear just shoots right by these other ones. Man, that's, that's crazy. Boy, the art has really evolved, like, from the very beginning. And then that transition when they switch over, and then... Yeah, it's really interesting. Boom, now we're back to the classics. Look at that. That's a wonderful shot. Full page spread is running right at the other little creature. And Triceratops. Cyborg. And we're, wow, we're getting right to the end. And like, hey, there's still a lot of action going on. And Death Cross shows up again with a bunch of other monsters. Wow, that's dramatic, standing right over uh, Machine Sower with that awesome sword. Oh man, look at this. Death Cross. And then this shot, and that's it. It literally ends, and it's the only volume. So what I read about what happened was um, advertisements. So I, I I don't know the full story, only what I read, but you know, Toy Animation, who's done a lot of, tons of anime over the years, some of the early Gona Guy stuff, um, they had done a one of his characters called Guy King, who ended up in the Shogun Warrior line. Um... I guess there was a dispute with Toy Animation and Gona Guy not getting credit or royalties from the Guy King uh, anime that he was one of the creators on. Um, so, well, that was being disputed. I guess this might have been produced. It was for it was for a publisher. As far as I know, Toy Animation doesn't have a publishing arm, but I guess he was doing it with you know maybe as a plan to do it as an animated series. Maybe that's why they had uh, some toy 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 deals lined up. But so going a guy who got apparently got upset at one point with the um, the rights issue with Guy King, and then he just kind of just stopped. Hey, you know what? I'm not doing any more of this. We're we're stopping working on this storyline for you guys. So um, that's why he got stopped. And then I guess he didn't. Him and Toy did not have come to an agreement for like 40 years. Kind of foolish. You'd want to piss off one of the top uh, manga creators in the country, in the industry, but, um, and then 40 years later, I guess they resolved the lawsuit, because eventually, Toy Animation ended up producing the, uh, Mazinger Z, um, uh, film in 2018, Mazinger Infinity, um, so they patched it up, hopefully everything was resolved financially as well, but anyway, so this was ended, so, this, but, thankfully, thankfully I got it, but thankfully there was just, one volume, but it was all, it was all collected, so this is out there. Um, it's scarce. In fact, I think I posted today um, the world's most wanted manga, Machine Sour. So maybe with this video, not will be. So anyway, wanted to share these two really interesting, not as commonly known going to guy properties, um, Garla and a Machine Sour 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 Sour. Look it up. Great stuff. And I hope if you uh, want a copy, you're able to find one. Um, but you are going to be dropping some money on it. Not hundreds of dollars, but it's not one of these $10, $20, $30 
mangas maybe you occasionally buy from Japan. But anyway, thanks everybody. Um, if this is your first time watching the channel. Thank you for checking it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll put a link here, somewhere here for uh, my other Gona Guy uh, videos. Uh, I've done about three or four already of his other works. And um, subscribe to the channel, right? So you can get updates. I'll be doing more manga videos, more definitely more Gona Guy videos. I'll also be doing videos on my own work. I'm a cartoonist. I do this comic book called El Muerto's graphic novel series. Um, so I got a couple of more videos coming up. I'll be inking, you know, more pages of the graphic novel I'm working on. Um, but thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode of Looks Comics TV.